Hey, hello everyone, and peace of Christ all of you. I hope my voice is coming good and clear to your side. Please let me know if you have any problem or difficulty. Uh, uh, I see somebody, a Muslim, he is posting bad text, uh, first peace of Christ and happy new year. A Muslim, he is posting saying, Christian boys are busy, they are late watching porn. My friend, if you search right now in Google, you will find that number one countries who watch porn are Pakistan. And not only that, they search in, 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 in Google for, you know, sex with animals. I mean, come on, just go and do it right now. I mean, you are very silly. However, if you are against porn, then you should be against Allah. Because if Allah is not the God of porn, he will not promise you a huge number of women because this is nothing but porn. You see, a man who loves a woman, they will be together. This is love. This is a family. But your God, he don't have anything except porn. If you pray to Allah five times a day, if you worship Allah, what you will get? Porn. 80,000 little boys and they are white and women who they are transparent. So shame on you to speak about porn, yet you are a Muhammadan, a Abdul. Look who is talking. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Amigo uh, uh, speaking to you. Uh, senora and senor, we welcome you to our station today. Uh, my Espanol is not good, but uh, I hope today that our start but it was with Basura, as you see. So we will not end with Basura, I hope not. Uh, our topic is uh he was what saying hold on what 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 he just posted uh, this abdul yeah poor abdul uh, <coughs> i'll talk uh, sorry youtube is uh is blocking his uh messages anyway uh today i went uh, to the beach early morning it was very beautiful very nice uh, but sadly, I don't have a bait with me. I forgot to buy a bait uh, for fishing and all the stores are closed. You know, it's a new year and early morning. Uh, your voice is rocking my blue. What does that mean? My voice is bad? Is the voice as good or bad? Hello. It's me you're looking for. How is my voice going through? Well, I don't know. Somebody's saying your voice is what? Is it too loud? Is it too bad? Well, tell me, please. All right. Is the voice bad? It's good. Okay. I know somebody is complaining. Anyway, so as, as you see in front of us, we have a picture of party. Now, me, myself, yesterday, you believe it or not, I slept at around 9.30 p.m. Exactly. Which means the new year is gone and I am asleep. I was so tired and I'm not really, I don't really care. It's just another night. For me, it doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make anything uh, new. Every day is a new day in our life. And there's nothing that's called really new year. However, the 2020, it is 2020. Sound interesting. This number will, not, will never be repeated again. I mean, that's an amazing number. First, it is 2,020 years after our Lord. So the whole world is unified in one thing finally, that our date, our salary, our birth, our death, our celebration, our events is dated by the Messiah and by his glory. Now, some people, they might use this day for crazy stuff, as we see in the screen, people going crazy and parties, etc., now, this is not a day for party, actually. This is a day either you are sad or happy. Sad for what you did last year or happy uh, for what you did last year. So it's a day where you stand and ask yourself what I did accomplish, what was wrong, what was good, uh, how, where I'm going to go, what I will be, right? Jesus Barnabas was a human sacrifice. Uh, Mr. Muhammad Pasha, just, just to show you, Muhammad Pasha, he is insisting, you know, those, uh, uh, I think maybe he's Ahmadiyya or something. Uh, he is saying that Jesus, the one who died in the cross, his name is Barnabas. Hmm. Okay, hold on. Uh, Muhammad, well, that's mean that the story of your prophet, he said, it's a stupid story. Because guess what? 
your prophet he did not say that there is somebody his name uh, like Jesus uh, uh, in the cross he said that Allah he placed someone instead of him so look what you are saying you are saying that your prophet is a big fat liar and I agree and you are the one who is getting your prophet busted thank you very much so this is very stupid of you to say because you know first of all even in Islam the Quran confirmed that the Christians and everybody witnessed the crucifixion of Jesus and it was Jesus as a look exactly him not someone his name is Jesus it is was it was someone look exactly like Jesus so you are saying stupid things proving to us again that you Muslims you don't respect your prophet and you get him busted and, and you know I should make you an admin right now no it does say that guys this guy it doesn't say that should we prove it he says it doesn't say that shall we prove it here we go we go to the yellow pages of Muhammad here we go this is the Quran you see even it's not my topic about getting your prophet busted but, but it's my pleasure let us read what the Quran says so we can love together here we go I like Abdul from now from now on you are an admin when I am not live on air all right here we go and because this is your translation not mine tell me what translation you like I will switch it don't don't give me excuse any any translation you like I will get you busted and it is because of their saying in boast we killed the Messiah Isa Jesus son of Maryam but they killed him not nor sacrificed him but resemblance of Isa Jesus was but another man there you see how stupid you are do you, do you, do you, do you, do you come to daddy come to daddy you knew you, you, you. you know what if the city allowed me to grow some of you like you in my backyard I will grow but they don't allow me they said no chicken and this is the problem and you are the kind of a chicken who his voice is not a voice of a rooster and you don't lay eggs you lay fart so look what you did you just farted at your Quran and you made fun of your prophet and your Quran because you are a copy paste Abdul somebody says that to you and that you are coming to us to say to us that and now you are what the bracket I don't care for bracket okay give me a translation you accept guys he said the bracket there is a bracket okay give me the translation you accept this is the problem the brackets now okay give me a translation you accept which brass which translation you accept suddenly now he will say I don't accept any translation I don't care here we go I speak it in Ar we can read it in Arabic so you are a potato and you've been fried without even oil we can go and read the interpretation everybody will see any interpretation any Islamic interpretation they will laugh at you so my friend next time before you enter to the chat of a Christian Prince don't forget to bend over to get spanking Jesus Barnabas mean Jesus son of the father uh -huh, uh -huh, okay <laughs> you remind me of somebody told us about Elijah before so anyway my friend even according to your stupid religion Jesus right now in heaven let us go with you you know what Jesus wasn't crucified but isn't it this is will make Jesus more accepted to be God because look at this somebody yesterday he posted in the chat or in the in the comment says how God die man <laughs> okay he's saying if Jesus is God then he should not die but according to Islam this is mean Jesus must be God because Jesus never died in Islam and this is how silly the stupid religion of the Mohammedan because they are trying to say Jesus is not God because if he is God he shall not die because God doesn't die but in Islam Jesus did not die so who is the fool here secondly my friend in Christianity when we say Jesus died it doesn't mean that God died what we are saying that the flesh because Jesus says before Abraham I am which means his existence have nothing to do with his birth his existence have nothing to do with the flesh he came with his existence is way long before so what die it was the flesh of Jesus which he was born with but God never died so my friend 
The boy is your prophet who is at the age of 54. He was dating someone at the age of six years old. That is the boy. The boy is somebody, huh? He challenged people to debate, but he don't dare even to debate. All of you are a bunch of boys, actually girls. And Muhammad was my Barbie. Now, uh, we go back to our topic. This Abdul, he is just a, you know, he got, he, he got, he got what he deserved and now he's getting upset and he starts calling names because he don't know what to say. I am not in the Hebrew Greek. Uh, my friend, just go. You know, next time you want to say something, call me. Call me in Skype and so I let everybody laugh at you. Go, take a break. Take a hike. I just block you. I don't have time for stupid. You see, look how coward you are. I said to you, what translation you accept? You did not give me a translation you accept because all translation will accept will get you busted. I said, what interpretation you accept? You did not give me any interpretation you accept because all interpretation will get you busted. All stories, all, all the books in Islam, they will get you busted because you are a potato. You are here just to make a comment and hit and run. But the hit, it doesn't work in Christian Prince place. It bounces back, my friend. So try to hit. All the Muslims who try to hit here, they, it's going to be bounced back to them. And this is exactly what happened. Uh, <clears throat> now, we go back to our topic about the New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I don't know. Is my voice is coming good? I think my voice is not good. I don't know. I think I need to change my diet. You know, I need to, uh, to eat halal food. <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> okay, so what I wanted to say with you today, or speak to you about, you know, life is, is a continued journey. It's not a day, it's not a night, it's not even a second. It is all of those. Every second is your day. And every second goes, we'll never come back. And when we say a new year, I mean, what we are expecting are getting older. I don't know, girls. I don't think girls, they will be happy with the new year thing. Okay, girls, how many here, they are over the age of 21? Nobody. All of them, they are 17. Okay, including my mom. All right. So what we want really from, uh, uh, from the new year, you know, a check out for it. That's my friend, you're, you're, this Farid is a boy. Let him, if he is a man, let him call me. The same as, you know, just don't spam. The same as Mimi Hijab, he promised everybody to debate me, but he did not debate. Coward like he's a prophet. Where are you? How come you can destroy my career without talking to me? Even this Mimi, Lulu, Susu, boo boy, huh? mute him, hang up on him, mute him. Huh? And he changed the topic every two seconds because he's a coward, he's a potato. And the rest of you is the same. So don't count for me names. If there is one of you is a man enough, my Skype is always open. We receive calls and nobody dare to call. Right? Okay. Come back with the... <clears throat> so, in the new year, it should be just every day in the morning. We wake up and we ask ourselves, what we did in the last year? What was our success? What we accomplished? Or did we lost a year? Or did we win? Was last year equal to 10 years in our life? Or it was just a silly, stupid thing? With, we accomplished nothing. So the year should be, or the new year, should be a day where you stand with yourself and you do a little study and correction for everything you do if there is something you need to correct. And for sure, all of us will need things to correct. I mean, we are not angels, we are not God, we are a human, we make mistakes. So each one of us, including me, we have things we wish we did not do, or things we did not you know, want to do, or things we wanted to do and we could not able to do. So if there is something we wanted to do, we want to check out why we could not do it and how we can fix that maybe if this is still a target for us in this coming year. If there is something we did in the past and we don't like, then we should ask ourselves, okay, how we can avoid having such, such a thing to be done again? And that goes for everybody, you know, uh, uh, no exception, no exception. So New Year should not be a party where people like uh, shout and dance and blah, 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 blah. Okay, you know, uh, 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 be happy is good. You know, we are Christian, Christian should be happy. 
This is why you see the Muhammadan, they never have happiness. Even when they have a holiday, their, their, their happiness is in eating uh, kapsa, you know, uh, rice and meat. And that's it. This is the happiness. Big Billy. <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we fast Ramadan and Ramadan supposedly is the month of fasting, but we eat more in Ramadan and we gain more weight and the food price will go skyrocketing. Why? Because you are eating more. So we don't do that. We are not pagans who kiss a black stone and we think black stone will fix our problems. This is why the Middle East have all the problems in the world because they kiss black stone waiting for the black stone to fix it. And the Middle Eastern and the Middle Eastern too, you know, in the Middle East, we have a problem. It's called inshallah. What inshallah mean? Uh, if Allah, Allah is the name of the God of Islam, as you know. So if they have a problem, they say, uh, <clears throat> Insha'Allah. Okay. So we have a hole in the front of our door. And Insha'Allah, the city will fix it. You call the city. You say to them, uh, guys, are you going to fix this hole in the front of our house? Uh, you know, people, they fit in it. Cars, boys, children. Are you going to fix it? Insha'Allah, we will fix it. Just brother. Okay, Insha'Allah. Now, Insha'Allah, keep going seven years, eight years, ten years. You go, you stay away in USA for 40 years. You come back, still the hole is there. It's not fixed. Why? Because this is this is a mentality. This is a word worked by Insha'Allah, which is not even exist. Now, we don't want to be the same as a pagan who wish for Insha'Allah to fix his stuff. Our God is real. But doesn't mean that he is the one who will fix it for us. We have to fix it. You know, God is willing. This is this is a word mean. I am willing to do and the, may, the, may the Lord support me. Not God is willing mean that God would do it. All right. Yeah, inshallah is like get lost. You know, don't call us again. <laughs> By the way, I heard the news that today in the morning, uh, uh, the Ahmadiyya, 1,500 from the youth of Ahmadiyya cleaning London. You know, Ahmadiyya, they are very good in showing off, like they are the one who will clean the city. Look how good citizen they are. I mean, if you are clean that much and you are so good, what about the biggest city of Ahmadiyya in Pakistan, which is really dirty? How come we see this kind of movement in London but we don't see it in the center of Ahmadiyya. It's just a show off. And this is why they choose it in the new year. Why you don't do it in different day? No, in the new year. So everybody will talk about them. I mean, how silly and how openly exposed movement. You know, in Bangladesh and those cities where there's a lot of Ahmadiyya, they, they write in Arabic in the walls. Why they write in the Arabic in walls? Anyone knows? Anyone knows? Let us see in the news. Give me a second. Oh boy, I'm typing in Arabic all this time. Oh poor. Okay. Just to show you, you know, how this, uh, this, uh, those, those, those countries work, you know. This is how they clean their streets. Sorry, sorry guys for the, but, but, but I, I clicked the wrong bomb. Sorry, I, I apologize. Uh, this is how they stop people from urinating in the walls. They urinate in the street there. Not only garbage is all over. They, they use Arabic words, any Arabic words, because those people, they, are, they, have, they, have, they have issues. They think Arabic words are holy. They don't know, they don't speak Arabic. So they may, maybe it's the name of Muhammad, maybe it's the name of Allah, maybe it's a verse from the Quran. So what they do to stop, is if you don't want people to urinate in your wall, you write in Arabic on the wall. 
So you want to show us how cloth, how clean you are. You want to clean London 1,500. Why we don't see 1,500 cleaning the urination all over in the, your, your country is there? Hmm? Huh? Bangladesh uses Arabic to stop public urination. Do you see how useful the Arabic is? I never heard that. I, our language, and I am an Arab, is very useful. And there's a connection between our language and urination. Look at this. Hmm. So they love to show off. They love to show that they are the best and they are the quality. But is that true? Absolutely not true. You know, especially Ahmadiyya, you know, they, they, they are sneaky. They like to show you that they are, you know, uh, you know, I mean, once I have a video of a TV station of Ahmadiyya in Arabic, so somebody call and or ask about beating beating the wife. The guy he said to him, "So what? Beat her, man. Beat her and teach her how to behave." Blah 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 blah. So I recorded the video and I posted it in YouTube. In less than five minutes, those cowards they reported my videos copyright. So in Arabic they say to you, "Beat your wife, do jihad, etc." Ahmadiyya and English are different Ahmadiyya. The Ahmadiyya who speak in English when they speak in front of people, especially foreigners. So those people, they have two faces, face for propaganda and face for we are the angels. Meet the angels, Ahmadiyya. Nice to meet you. All right. <clears throat> All right. So we go back. Uh, I want to I wanna review some news. Uh, to see, you know, I, I give you my my insight about, uh, you know, what we should do in the in this start for the new year. You know, me myself, I'm doing a lot of things. I, I wish I can share with you, uh, but uh, 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 my grandma she did not allow me, uh, so I cannot do it. You know, uh, for that reason. Uh, but I'm doing a lot of things actually. Uh, I'm doing some change too in 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 the way I accomplish things, the way I do things. And I hope I hope this coming year will be better for me. I'm planning for, you know, more activities and more accomplishment. But, uh, you know, you have to think in advance. You have to work for it. Nothing is easy. Life is hard, uh, but it's full of joy. Actually, hard life have more joy than easy life. You know, easy life is easy go. I mean, when, when you get things easy, you don't feel their, uh, let us say, uh, the taste of it. You don't feel like it's something special because it was so easy. It's like somebody, uh, you know, if, if you if you if you think about it this way, when there is a poor person, poor, very poor, and then he accomplished something and this something he's for him is so proud of it like what he got you know he got uh, let us say he bought a tv but maybe it's a small but he is so happy and this is the most important it's about how much you can be happy for accomplishment you did because if you accomplish and you own millions and then you are not happy the the, the, the poor guy with the tv is better than you at least at this moment so we have to search for happiness and happiness come with hard work in a better way because hard work will make you a better person will make you more solid will make you more strong and will make you in you know, a more resistance to all kind of you know bad things happen around us easy things this is why like you say a spoiled spoiled uh, child you know what spoiled child mean he grew up in a, in a family, they are wealthy usually, uh, or maybe he's not even wealthy, but his family, they spoiled him. Whatever he asked for, they tried their best to give him. This boy, he have no future. They have no future. You know, you're destroying him actually. This is why the word spoiled means damaged. So a spoiled person is a damaged person. A person who do not know how to wake up in the morning so he can go to work, he's a damaged person. A person who don't feel responsibility to his family, his children, he's a damaged person. A person he is running away from all kind of responsibility. You know, today I was I was uh, uh, in the road and I saw somebody, 
I mean, he is, he's stronger than me, you know. I can carry a fridge alone. Uh, maybe he can carry two fridge. And then he is holding a, a piece of paper, you know, uh, please food. I mean, how in the world this is work? You are a man, you are powerful, you are strong, you are not even old. And how shame, how shame it is to stand in the corner of the road asking for somebody to give you a penny to, to buy a sandwich. What about you? Go and work. I mean, they are hiring everywhere. Like, you know, it's crazy. So why? Because he is he's a lazy. <clears throat> he don't mind to live under the bridge. He don't mind if you don't take a shower for a month or two or maybe a year. But for him, what he cares for is having some beer and maybe some drugs. All right? So, it is a lifestyle you choose. Either you, you want to be a lazy person, lose respect from yourself, and live like hippies, you know, who have no future, have no life. Time will come and you will be old and you don't even have anything. I mean... Who's going to who's going to look for you actually? You know, a person like this. Because if you are a person like that, that's mean if you even have a children, you would not be able to take care for for them. So they, your children would hate you. They will say when we were kids, what you were doing, you were doing drugs. When we need you most, you did not even care for us. You could not help us. So when you are old, why you why they want to care for you? <clears throat> So we have to accomplish something, you know, uh, and the most accomplishment we do for ourselves is to be firm, to be solid, and to be strong, and to make decisions. And those decisions, first, I will not be lazy. I will not be independent in somebody else. I want to be dependent on myself and my faith and faith here is very important because a person a person who have no faith he have no hope and he have you know he he don't think even he will accomplish anything because you don't have faith of it you see when first time you learn how to, to drive a bicycle <clears throat> you will be terrified scared you will fail down why because you don't have faith otherwise it's very easy i mean it's just uh, driving a bicycle is so easy but because you don't have faith that you can make it. You are terrified. But then, uh, uh, the more you practice it, the more you see that it's easy. And then you trust yourself. And the trust would make you accomplish uh, confidence. And then, you never even think how to drive a bicycle after that. You don't even think how you drive your car after that. First day, you are so nervous driving the car. You are, so, you are holding the steering as if you are going to, to eat it. But because you don't have a trust, so, having a trust is extremely important. And the trust is something we earn. Yourself, you don't trust yourself unless you earn it. You believe it? Usually, you know, we say, uh, somebody cannot trust me unless he try me first, right? This is exactly happened to yourself. You yourself, you don't trust yourself unless you try yourself. And I will make it simple for you. <clears throat> If you are a person who did something and that thing is not wasn't successful, then you did something else and it wasn't successful. Then you did something after that, third time, fourth time, it was not successful. And then after that, you will be you will lose a trust in yourself. You will be afraid because whatever I do, I'm doing wrong, you know, and that is big problem. Big problem why? Because I just destroyed my future. My past became my future. So I did not do good in the, in the past. So I decided because I lost trust and confidence on myself to lose trust on myself in the, in the future. And that means my life is over. What I will be able to do? Nothing. So you should not give up. Don't be a quicker. If you fail, it's okay. I mean, who said that you will succeed? You see, if you don't fail, you will never succeed. Success is based on failure. 
all those famous scientists, they did not become scientists in a, in a day. They have hundreds of thousands of experiment. All of them they fail, one succeed, and they made them famous. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so, for me as a Christian, uh, I should have always confidence because simply I'm not by myself. You know, when the Muhammadan, as an example, like when a Muslim, he said uh, how God he died, and we said to him clearly that God never died, that the flesh of Jesus, but God is always alive. This is why Jesus, he said, every two of you mention my name, I will be between you. So Jesus, when he said that, he is confirming to us that those who believe in me, they are not alone. You are not alone, my friend. And you know what? Always the Lord, if you are, especially when you are a person with good heart, He will send you good people around you. You meet bad ones, ugly ones. Like actually, today I was walking in the store to buy something, and uh, I push in my cart, and then there is an old lady, and she said to me, are you blind? But I did not touch her. I did not, you know, she's just like confused where to go, right or left. She's far away from me. But she's an old woman. What I will shout at her, I will say, What's wrong with you? No. I said to her, Happy New Year. You know, she is old, obviously, and you know, you you you, you have to observe the the you know, like uh, she's I'm, I'm sure she's a good person. I'm, I don't think she's a bad person, but she is, you know, when when we get older in that age, in certain age, we act like kids. You know, we, so are you blind? I'm far away from her. I'm not even like maybe maybe 20 foot far away from her. Uh, so the Lord always, you know, teach you and guide you what is best for you. This woman, maybe today she said something bad to me. And then after she said to me, are you blind? I said to her, Happy New Year, ma'am. Uh, she looked at me and she said, sorry, you know. So she started being bad and waiting for me to be bad too. And then we will fight maybe and shout at each other. For sure, we will not fight physically, especially she's a very old woman. That will not be good. So, uh, but being kind and being gentle with her, she felt that she was really not right. I mean, she was stupid, you know. Uh, I don't want to use the word stupid, but it was a stupid of her to shout at me for nothing. I did nothing to her. So sometimes we are, we act like this. Somebody did something, nothing to us. You know, it's like I'm coming from the other side. You have your cart in your hand. And like go right or left. She get confused which way to go. I move right. She move right. I move left. She move left. So, okay, not a big deal. So sometimes we as a human being, we don't know what to do, what we, where to go, right or left. And we go right and the way is blocked. And we go left as the way is blocked. Don't give up. It's just, it's okay. It's easy. You, you know, you will find a way. The way will open. So we need always to, to be, uh, 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 you know, let us say, uh, uh, it's like somebody wearing dark sunglasses in the, in the, in the, in the dark room. I mean, how you want to see? You don't see anything. You are wearing dark glasses in the wrong, wrong timing so what happened to us always or sometime depend on the person we don't see uh, farther than our finger you know when i see a person being upset from me for not, nothing and uh, i need to think about it okay if i ask if i if i get rude now what i answer i say hey i did not do anything wrong with you okay what this will accomplish i mean where we will go and what is next she was she will scream at me so and those things, I'm not talking about this incident, by the way. I'm just talking about things happen in your life and you have to be patient. You have to control yourself. Learn how to control yourself. Learn how to control your failure, you know, so you can earn success. Every day you will face something, sometimes something silly, something stupid or something really very tough. But sometimes we can make from something silly something very tough on ourselves. 
So you need to learn how to enjoy your day so you can have, have happy new year every day. I don't want to use the word take it easy. I want to use the word be patient. Everything in life is about patient. Everything. You see, your mother, she carry you for nine months. Nine months. I mean, this is a lot of patient. And then she gave birth to you with a lot of pain and patient. But look, your mother, she wanted to have you before even you exist. So she is willing to give from her time and her patient and her even suffering to have you. And then having you as a beautiful gift, she cannot regret. So let us say life is like this. You are carrying a baby, you know, for sure, I'm not saying that if you are a man, you are carrying a baby. But it's like a, a woman, she is carrying a baby. And this baby is going to cause a lot of trouble. Pain, delivery room, nine months of carrying. She cannot move around. She is worried. She cannot do sports. She cannot walk. I mean, there's a lot of things. She go to the doctor. She, you know, a lot of worry, a lot of things happening in her body too. Even your body change. All of this because she want to have a child. So what we what make this woman able to handle all of this? Nothing except love. Nothing except love. If you love what you do, you enjoy it. It doesn't matter how hard it is. You know what I mean? <clears throat> you love it. So whatever you do, you will enjoy it. So what I'm trying to say to you, what about we love what we do, which is causing us maybe frustration but we want to accomplish that thing. So if you love it, you will do better. Not only you will do better, you know, it's going to be fun. You see, imagine you go to work, but you don't like that job you are doing. I mean, this is horrible. You will hate it. But if you love what you do, then you would love to go to work. And this is exactly what I was trying to say to you by mentioning the mother having a baby. She love it. She do it. And she enjoy it. Even though it's a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, and a lot of responsibility. So, I hope in the new year, we will uh, try to be happy people. And the happiness is something we can draw. Now, for sure, like, I mean, things can happen which is not happy. Somebody lose uh, a relative, a child, a parents, a sister, a brother. You know, uh, life is full of death and birth and etc. But my friend, those things, we should accept them as normal things of our life. They should not really stop life from going. Me, myself, you, everybody here, we will die one day. It's just a matter of time. So this is, should not be really a reason to be sad or to be, I mean, like to, to, to take you down because you know where you came in from and you, where you, you know where you're going. So where is the surprise? Right? And for you as a Christian, if you're really a believer, then you will not be worried about where you will end. Because at the end of the day, Jesus, he said, 
whoever die and believe in me, he will live. So your death is your life. Your death is just another life. My friend, all of us, we, are, we will lose families. Who said nobody will lose family? And there's many ways to lose families. There's many ways to lose families. You know, I will give you an example. I will not say it is me, <laughs> but imagine yourself, you immigrate from the end of the world and you find yourself in a strange country. So guess what happened? Over one day, you lost all the family, not one. Not only all the family, all the memory, all the friends, everything. Suddenly, you are in a land where even you don't even speak the good, you know, good, the good language of it. Where people maybe will make fun of you and your English. So what we will do? Sit and cry? No. Everywhere you go, you can have a new family. It's the bent who you consider them as a family for you. If you are a person who is just attached only to blood, I mean, I don't think you are making doing a good thing. Because who said that my family is people of my blood? There's many good people around in the world. They can be better than my family to me. And look at you. I have tons of people. They are my family. Actually, yesterday, somebody he posted in the chat said, uh, Hey, Christian Prince, uh, I hope you enjoy your trip, but I hope you are not spending the donation in your trip. I said to him, well, sad news. <laughs> you know, I am spending the donation on my trip. Sad news for him, for sure. Looks like he is, I don't know, he's being silly, being smart, being sarcastic. I don't know what he was. But look at this. I have a family I never met. Literally. I never saw. They don't even know how I look like. And even though they send donation. I mean, do you see how this earth is full and there's a lot of good heart people? How in the world you know you like you, you are going to send money? You work for it. You don't find nobody of those people they find their money in the street. They don't have a vacuum machine and they walk in the street and they collect money. People they work hard for their money. So what will make a person take from his pocket and give it to someone? Literally, he's a stranger. Unless he consider him a family. And maybe your brother from your father, he will not send you a penny. Is that correct? You might have a brother. He is your brother who is from your mother and your father. But he will not even send you a penny even if you are hungry. Even if you are dying. So family, my friend, is bigger than just, you know, ma, mom and dad and the brother and sister. We are family. We are. And you can have a new family everywhere. You see, when Adam commits sin, and he was cast out of heaven with Eve, the reason Adam and Eve, they've been given the opportunity, and I say opportunity, to give birth, is to live. To make it simple, you see, we are recreated again. There was Adam, and now is me. And me is Adam. So, God is all loving and all merciful. Yes, he cast him out of heaven, and now he is not going to live forever as he was going to live in the heaven. But look, he replaced him with something. He allowed him, and he gave him opportunity and a creation that me, him and the female together, they can reproduce. It's like replacing your death with extended lifetime. I mean, this is, will keep going until judgment day. People giving birth, giving birth. So it is just like we died, but we are alive. Because your blood is still running. And you yourself, you are the blood of somebody else before you. 
So life is a journey, and the journey did not stop with your death. This is a plan of God, and we have a choices in it, which mean we don't believe in destiny. The, you know, destiny in Christianity is totally different from destiny and destiny the cult of Islam. Because in Islam, everything is preset, predated, pre-ordered, pre-organized. You know, no, in Christianity, no. There is, there is destiny where, uh, uh, like this, let us say, uh, you will be uh, punished. That is a destiny. But it's not your destiny to be punished unless you make it happen. It's your destiny to be live in heaven. But it's not destiny to you that will be in heaven unless you make it happen. This is how a Christianity works. Right? <clears throat> Uh, yeah, thank you very much. I will, yeah, I will, I will, I will spend it in my trip. <laughs> Actually, today, uh, you know, I, I, I took a video. I was going to post it, but where I was, like it was the, the you know, I'm using data, so my data is limited. Uh, but I'm planning to go again, and I will take uh, some fishing bait with me this time, and let us see if is if a, if a Christian prince he will get a fish. Now, how many of you watched the video uh, in the ocean? I don't want to change the topic, but I think you, you get what I'm trying to say. If you watch that video about the ocean, it's very short. I mean, it's like 17 seconds, something like that. A uh, few days ago, I was far away from where I am now, very cold, under, you know, today there it's minus, I think, minus 8 or minus 10. Here it is like 27 degree. It's like summertime. So, you know, life is like this. In the same moment, there is a place where it's hot or warm, and there's a place where it is freezing or under free. Or, I mean, I don't know how to describe what under freezing mean. And that's what we can be ourselves. You can be a person who is active. A person who is alive, a person who is, you know, producing, giving production, or a person who is a freezed. You choose, my friend, what you want to be. I can choose, okay, I'm a person who is a stranger in a country, who people make fun of my English. His English is not good. Ha, 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 spelling grammar is funny. Ha, 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 Christian prince, go and learn English. Not only that, they make fun of my Arabic. <laughs> so either I say, okay, I'm afraid to myself. I will be afraid to speak because if I speak, I will make mistakes. And if I make mistakes, people will laugh at me. And if people laugh at me, I will be ashamed. No, my friend. I will speak and I will make mistakes and I will not be ashamed. I will be proud, actually, because I speak many languages. Number two, if my language is bad and I did what I did, what if my language is good? So either you see life in a negative way or you see it in a positive way. For me, I see it as something very positive. You know what I mean? So, my friend, please let us be people who they are positive in the same time, not fool. Which means, don't try to make something stupid, bad, a positive thing. No, you have to be smart. Right? Like a drinking is not positive. <laughs> because now I say, okay, this is a good philosophy. Uh, I get drunk, I lose my mind, I forget about everything, and huh, and huh, and huh. And now I am positive. No, this is not positive. This is stupidity. Positive is to look at things which look negative and see what is good in it. What is good in it for me? And if there is something not right, I, I you know I'm like happening around me, what that will affect me and what is the shame? Did I, am I doing a shame really? I'm doing it wrong? Why people want to laugh at me? What exactly I did? Nothing. So why they are laughing? That means they are should be ashamed of themselves, not me. And I will continue speaking as I speak.
You know what I mean? Happy New Year, my friend. Map, Mip, Mips. Thank you. And we have uh, an Animish. You see, even I don't know how to read the names. <laughs> Uh, in the same way, the Lord commanded that those who proclaim the gospel should get their living by the gospel. Thank you, my friend. Yeah, you see, you know, good people and good, good, good family. Family, I do not know. Yet they support me and, you know, I don't really, this is why I don't feel that I'm alone. I feel uh, uh, that the Lord always, he sent in my way uh, the good ones. And always there is good ones in your way. Uh, try to be smart, not to be fool. So for those today, I want to give some advices, but don't take it as an advice from somebody smarter. Take it as an advice from somebody care for you, because I think maybe you are smarter than me. But I think smoking is bad. And I think drinking is bad. You can drink like once a while, a little tiny drink, you know, just to taste it, enjoy it. You see, drinking alcohol is not meant to drink, you know, no. You taste it, you know, you put it in your mouth, you taste it slowly. So a little cup should spend the whole night and you can enjoy it the same way. Actually, you can enjoy it more than it's drinking fast because if you drink fast, you will get drunk and then you don't feel anything. You see, in the old days, if you remember when, when, uh, 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 Mary, the mother of uh, uh, our Lord, uh, she asked the Messiah for the miracle of the wine. If you remember. In the wedding, when the wedding is start, they serve the most expensive wine in the beginning. Anyone knows why? Why they serve the, the expensive wine in the beginning? Because at that time, everybody is awake. <laughs> they knew what they are drinking. But after an hour or so, all wine is the same, the bad or the good. Right? So if you are a person who want to drink and you like to drink, drinking can be good, by the way. Who said it's bad? It can be even healthy. Even doctors, they advise people who have a heart problem to drink, but to drink little. This is why the Lord, he says, little of it will bust your heart. Little of it. And actually, it's true, you know, as I said, doctors, they advise those who have a problem with their heart to drink little alcohol, little. So, if you are drinking, you need to drink little if you have to, if you enjoy it. If you smoke, you should not smoke. Smoke is the worst thing you do to yourself. You are just shooting yourself in the heart, in the head, in the in the liver, in the in, in everywhere. You are just taking poison, but a slow one, every day a new dose of poison. If you are lazy, don't be lazy, my friend. The, the world will not remember you, and the train will not stop for you. Time goes so fast. 2020. Man, I remember it was just 2000 years celebration, New Year, 20 years ago. How fast? It's like yesterday. So if you are lazy and you accomplish nothing, time will come and you will find yourself zero. And then you will say to yourself, Oh, what's wrong? So you need to make accomplishment and the accomplishment not necessarily money or wealth. Accomplishment is to be a person who to be remembered. Remembered by people who loves you. For the good you do. For the accomplishment you did. For things you build. For things you fixed. For things you did. People will remember you for one of two, either bad or good. And this is exactly what accomplishment I'm talking about. So we have to be, you know, the Lord, he wants us to be happy. And we are happy people. 
people of Christ, they are always happy. And you know, I find it really strange uh, how our belief can change our uh, mood. You see, yesterday I was watching the news and I saw uh, uh, Hezbollah. Hezbollah in Iraq shouting, death to America, the, the big Satan, the big Satan. You know, and here I noticed, I said to myself, those who they are standing by tens of thousands in front of the American embassy shouting the big Satan, do you really believe themselves? I mean, did you look your, at yourself in the mirror when you are shouting? <laughs> I wish we can put in the front of them a mirror and to see how how this cult change you. Imagine there is nations, they shout in the morning before they, they don't even say good morning. They say, death to America, death to Israel. This is their good morning. So what you expect after that for the dinner? What you expect for after that for the lunch? So the lifestyle change, the mood, the happiness. This can make you angry. Not only angry, make you look at this. If we go right now, search news in the last 24 hours. Erdogan with a lunch war against the, the, the Libya, Haftar. Egypt threatened Erdogan. Erdogan want to build an empire. Erdogan is sending Syrian fighters, mission, you know, like, for, you know, they are working for money. He is sending Al-Qaeda. I mean, the, the, the Islam cannot live in peace with neighbors. It doesn't matter if they are Christians or Muslims. Many people think that Islam can make neighbors, if they are Muslims, live in peace. No. Okay, go and find me one Muslim neighbor, live peacefully with his neighbor. I'm talking about countries now. You will not find any. Saudi Arabia against Qatar. Saudi Arabia in war in Yemen. Yemen is war with, 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 with Emirat, Bahrain, uh, uh, Qatar, and uh, Saudi Arabia. Syria is in war with, uh, uh, you know, I mean, everybody. You name it. For all the Muslim Muslim fighters coming from everywhere, even from Shishenia. Uh, Turkey, don't, don't even count. You know, it's endless. Uh, I mean, you name it. Where you can find, you know, uh, uh, you go to Africa, you know, attacking a church, attacking parties, attacking a mosque. Even a mosque, they attack a mosque, not only a church. I mean, this religion... Is, is nothing but madness. So when I said, I don't know what this coming year will bring to us, I'm expecting actually a lot of evil stuff to happen in the coming year. Because you see, uh, I don't know how to explain that to you. Imagine you are in a boat, okay, and there is a there is some leak in the boat, and you notice the water coming in the boat, but the captain says to you, "Don't worry, it's okay. This is normal." Okay, he's the captain. The captain he said it's okay, right? I mean, the captain he knew his job, right? And he's in the boat, so he would drown with me. This is exactly what's happening in the world today. We have captains who they are leaders in this earth. They are saying to us everything is okay. But in fact, nothing is okay. Any second, any moment, this world can be going to hell. Nukes. Terrorist attack, dirty bombs. So we don't know what this coming year will bring. The only thing we know that the coming year is coming. And the only thing we know that we have a hypocrite leaders 
who they keep saying to us everything is in order but in fact nothing is in order I don't know if you hear about terrorists these days they are using a drone a drone you know uh, to do a uh, bombing so now Al-Qaeda they have those technology and they can bomb you in your home do they not need an army somebody have a toy he learned how to make those you know weapon uh, he hang it to the airplane he fly in the top of your house he throw them on bingo so things is getting more complicated let me show you in the news and I'm expecting actually you see I just searched for it I don't know this is okay we created drones and they are nice nice toys you can make nice movies videos very beautiful but those drones now is in the hand of terrorists and they can send them far away I don't know if you saw how the Al Houthi, who is a terrorist group in, in Yemen, they send the drone all the way to Saudi Arabia and they bomb the oil facility. This is hundreds of miles away. So things is getting bad, more bad, because now security will not be stopped in the airport and not in the highway. And most of countries, they are not advanced to take down those drones. Maybe actually 95% in the world, nobody can stop those drones. They are too small to catch even by radar. There's no radar can capture them unless, you know, the Russian radar, as I know. So things is getting more ugly. And I'm expecting in the coming year that things will happen very bad things will happen by those terrorists because those terrorists by the help of our leaders they are spreading all over you see look how stupid or you know the western western leaders we have terrorists in syria and they are taking them back to europe there is 60000 isis members imagine they want to take them back to Europe. 60,000. So from the 60,000, let us say, those are ISIS, already are ISIS. They are not, maybe will be ISIS. They are ISIS. So if from the 60,000, only 60 people decide to do something, what will happen? I hope and I pray that things will not go wrong but as I see I mean we are supplying those terrorists we ourselves we are supplying them with the technology and now technology in the hand of terrorists is extremely extremely dangerous so I believe security will go less terrorist attack will increase war will be more aggressive like we see this Erdogan now he is hungry he want to eat all the oil in the Middle East he is hungry for the oil of Libya if you remember before I made a video about uh, uh, the plan of making Erdogan a caliphate you remember by the help of Obama where the Muslim Brotherhood controlled already Turkey and then they will control Syria and then Jordan and Saudi Arabia and Emirat and Masr Egypt, which is Egypt in Arabic, we call it Masr, and uh, 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 Libya and Tunisia. And this plan collapsed, you know, because of the Russian, not because of the American. However, now Erdogan is working hard to support the Muslim Brotherhood government in Libya. It's a small, tiny government. They, they control three cities, three small cities. So he is going to send his army there to defend this government. And Egypt they will not like that so it might be that Turkey and Egypt they go in war and not only that 
Greece and Cyprus, which is really oppressed by the Turkish for centuries. They might go in that war too. And not only that, Israel is getting involved. Israel, they signed already an agreement with Cyprus and Greece to run a pipeline for, uh, of gas all the way from Israel uh, into uh, Europe. So things is getting more and more complicated and we do not know really what is going to happen. However, we pray for peace and we wish for it. But there's a lot of evil doers. They are seeking war. And war, my friend, is going to bring a lot of disaster, especially in the Middle East. You know, I, I, I feel really sorry for this land. I am from there. And I mean, it's really, really disgusting. Every, I wish, I wish we will have a peace even for a year in our life. I mean, for centuries, since the time of Islam came to the Middle East, we never have peace. Not even one day. Never happen. Never. Many Muslim country proud of Erdogan? No, actually not. He's a Muslim Brotherhood. You know, Saudi Arabia, they hate him. Emirates, they hate him. Qatar, they hate him. Egypt, they hate him. Who oh, is proud of him? He's a Muslim Brotherhood. Only Muslim Brotherhood, they support him. <clears throat> Coconut oil. <laughs> yeah, actually, for me, if you ask me, by the way, Erdogan is the best thing happened. You know, many, do you remember uh, uh, a moment ago we were talking about thinking in a positive thing, about negative things? Okay, Erdogan is 100% negative person. He is a very evil person. He's a sneaky. He's using Europe. He's using refugee to collect to collect the money. You know, pay me for refugee. I cannot hold them. If you don't give me money, I will unleash them to come to Europe. So he's a very evil man. He plays games. He's not trustworthy. But those people, they never accomplish anything. For a very simple reason. Even those who they are called their friends, they knew they are not trustworthy. So nobody trusts him. And he don't trust any. So he is not trustworthy. And trust untrustworthy, nobody will let him do something successful. Secondly, uh, if Erdogan was not or did not become a president, the stupid European government, they would have Turkey as part of European Union long time ago. But having Erdogan becoming a president that stopped the Turkish from joining the European Union. And that would be a big, big problem for the European really if Turkey was able to join. So I'm very thankful that Europeans finally they saw that Turkey is not secular as they think. You see, they were trying to accept Turkey to join European Union because they were convinced after 30 years of being secular that those are secular. They are Muslims. Forget about the Islam. It's gone. No. And then now we have Erdogan. And Erdogan start talking about Muslim taking over Europe. He's saying that in public. He's talking about like having more babies so we can take over Europe. He called his army the army of the Muhammadan. Uh, Mimi Hijab, this is the last time you will post in my chat. You know, you are being silly and you are being stupid now. Don't come here again. So, he is an evil man, but this evil man, I say he saved Europe. Because Europe do not need more collapsing. Europe is like an old uh, lady who is uh, having a lot of uh, problems and she lost her mind. They open the borders, they open their etc. And then, it's, you know, things are going out of order. So imagine if Turkey joined European Union. This is 100 million Muhammadan entering into European Union over one day. So I say that the best thing happened to Europe is Erdogan. And Erdogan will cause Turkey to collapse. Just wait, it's just a matter of time. Turkey is in the way of collapse because this guy, he created a lot of enemies and he has zero friends.
Zero friends. Nobody like him. All right? So sometimes a snake can be a good thing because you will, it will wake you up and you will be alarmed. And this is exactly what the snake Erdogan he did. Right? So I hope you understand what I'm trying to say to you. All right. Uh, no, no, we are done with our topic. I, you know, I cannot advise you more than this. You see, you have to accomplish something in your life. You decide what it is, not me. You have to, to, to notice what is, your, where is your, what is the reason of your failure, if you have any. And for sure you have. I mean, all of us, we have. And then you have to see what is the best of you. You see, you have, you, you have something, you are very good in it. What is that? Try to find out what is that? What is the, what is the good of, of you? And try to use it. Like, you, you notice that there is something maybe when you do, people, they like you. What is that? And why people, they like me? Maybe it's not maybe it's not a good thing, by the way, because not necessarily people like you because you are doing a good thing. Maybe they want to laugh at you. Maybe because you are being a fool. So we have to accomplish something, and the first thing we accomplish is to examine what we do and how we do it. You know what I mean? In the same time, we have to be patient. The same as the mother, she wants to deliver a child. And before she have the child, before even she get the child, before she get married with the man she want to sleep with to have a baby, she made decision she want to have this child. So why she want to do that? Because she loved to have a child. So if you are a person who can make your target is the same as that child you want to have, you will be absolutely successful. You are 18 years old and you're still in your mother home. What I should do? Should I search for my own? Well, Karina, I really I thought you are over 18. <laughs> I should I should not make you an admin. Then. <laughs> Sorry for that. My, my friend, nothing wrong with staying with your mother home. Actually, it is even better. Why you want to leave your mother home? What's wrong with being with mother? Nothing wrong. You see, staying alone, being like, let's say, independent. When I say independent, doesn't mean having a house alone. No, not necessarily. Well, isn't it your mother is a good woman? And you enjoy being with her? So why do you want to be alone? Are you getting married? I mean, why do you, you want to be alone? So for me, even now, I'm a man. If I can stay in my mother house, sleep there, I will love it. It's a blessing to be next to my mother. What's wrong with that? So no shame to be in your parent house. As long as they love you, and not only that, by the way, you can save more money, so maybe you can buy your house, because now if you go and rent a place, then that will, will suck from your rent, from your income. So what about you stay in your mother home, you know, until you can make good saving so you can do something for your future, right? Ah, it wasn't Karina. Oh, okay, who said that? All right, all right. Let us see. Maybe I... I I thought it's her. Who is the one who posed that? Ah, okay, sorry. I thought this is coming from, okay, it was somebody posting. All right, I see. Her, her Lumbus. I don't know how to say your name. I thought it's Carolina. <laughs> All right. All right. It's my mistake. Uh, yeah, my friend, so stay in your mother home. And nothing wrong with that uh, but don't be dependent on them like don't put the pressure on them unless they can I mean if they are poor and you are a man you can work okay you can work work and support your mother too you know don't just be there like a worm if you are a person who can generate money support your parents they give you they give you a home they give you love 
and now you can make money well if they need it maybe they don't need it maybe they will refuse even to take from you because they don't need it but if they need it you should support them all right but there's nothing wrong to stay with your parents even if you are a man if you are a girl actually i encourage women to stay with their parents you know if you are a lady i encourage you not to live alone you see when you are a lady and you live alone there's a lot of problems will happen and uh, maybe we should make a special video about that because you see i uh, so i thought it's a wrong number and then after a while i didn't you know uh, i saw that lady she said oh i was expecting you to call because we have the books you know it's all like about about books so i said well i thought i have wrong number she said why I said well the voice message is a voice message of a man and supposedly you know you don't you don't have a you know you are, you are she's an old woman she is a widow she said, oh, you know, we put this so people would think that I have a man, so nobody would think about coming to my house or a thief or something. So here you see that women, they have a problem with security. When you live alone, you can be an easy target, especially if there's nobody around you to depend on. You know, we say, yes, women, they have the right, equal right to the men, etc. But there is something you cannot deny, that there is some predators, they can take advantage of you being alone as a female. So you should be always aware of your security. You know what I mean? But there are parents who they are bad and harass their children in many years. Do such a type parents deserve love? You know, you see, there is bad and there is good. You see, like here, like the let us see this uh, this lady here. She sounds like a drowning. We don't know what is making her suffering. Maybe maybe she have a bad parents. Uh, maybe she have, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, whatever problems in her life. Maybe she wanna, uh, you know, she she don't think life is worth it. But it's obviously this person is suffering from a lot of problems. So let us say you have a bad parents, okay? Well, you can stay away from them, no problem, but never hate them, and never think negative about yourself for you are coming from them. Because if you think they are bad, well, you know, I mean, good tree, good, good fruits. So we start thinking this logic. Okay, if my parents are bad, that means I'm bad too. No, my friend, I don't think your parents are bad. What, what happens usually, that we don't understand our parents. You see, you are coming from different generation. And they are from different generation. And you are not the first one who think that his parents are bad. And your parents, not the first one, they think that their son is bad. So you think your parents is bad and they think that you are the bad one. Simply because both of you are coming from two different generations and, you know, they don't, they don't, you don't understand each other. This is how I see it mostly. But for sure there are some cases where parents are really bad. Even they are criminals. You know, we heard of parents who they even rape their daughters. You know, so yes, there is parents who they are ugly, disgusting, and they don't even deserve to be parents. But we are speaking, generally speaking, that most of problem between children and their parents is misunderstanding. You see, many parents. <clears throat> And we are talking about the old days mostly uh, and it's not too different from now actually except that now let us say there is more ideas to adopt you know like uh, before there's only two ideas and those ideas they have to run in the house like the father and the mother and then the rest have to obey right uh, that can be healthy but it should not be made by someone he himself is an idiot like if my father is a bad person and then he is ordering me to do something bad or he is trying to make something bad of me then i should not obey the bible order you to obey actually your parents but the good parents the parents who obey god 
never obey evil never that's why jesus said that uh, i i brought sword a sword between who sword between you and your parents you know, your mother your father your family so th what he's talking about that their evil will be against your good their evil will be against your good so always you follow good whatever it is it's not about parents it's about good so if the parents are bad then pff, they are history don't hate them don't hate them and if they ask you for something to do which is good do it as long as good because remember they are your parents if they need your help you help them it's a shame to see that you have a parent but you don't care to help them even if they are not good to you all right <clears throat> Do we have any other question? Your mom, she was superwoman. Mm, your dad must be Superman. To weave a singer? Yeah, to weave a singer, he got Muhammad busted. This idiot, uh, to weave a singer. You know, he got Muhammad busted. Do you, do you remember the video I made for him? He said that the Christians, they have the idea that Mary, she is born, Jesus is born of a virgin from the Greek mythology. <laughs> and the funny Muslim are calling him and saying to him, God bless you, brother. I mean, look how foolish they are. You, this guy, he just he got your prophet busted. Because if this is true, that means Muhammad is a big fat liar and Allah is not exist. Because it is exist in the Quran that Mary, she was a virgin. So to weave a singer is like a snake. You know, he's he's a he's a he's a businessman. Habibi, a brother, and sister. In the in the in the Torah, there's nothing men saying about you know. But but this guy, he got your prophet busted, and we make him shish kebab long time ago. So if you are proud about him, you should be ashamed because he said it clearly. He don't dare to say Muhammad is a is a fraud, but he said that he's a coward. All right, <clears throat> is it a right for a man? For that men are sons of God, that men are sons of God, and the spiritual order is, oops, text jump, I lost you, order is God over Christ, Christ over men, men over women, and women over children. You know, my friend, you see, uh, we this order thing, this order thing, Maybe it's misunderstood. What the Bible speaks about is very simple. <clears throat> the Bible say that Christ is the head of the church and he ordered the man to love the women the same as Christ. He loved the church. So look what happened here. We have the women. She is made equal to the church. Correct? And the man is the head of the church, but that man, he sacrificed himself for the church. So you being in order does not mean you are the king. It means you are the servant. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey guys, do you understand? The Messiah, he's our Lord, isn't he? Okay. What the Messiah, he did, he is the Lord of the church. So what he did? He sacrificed himself for the church so the Bible is so clear that the man is the head of the house but the woman she is equal to the church so the man he should love the women and even we be willing to sacrifice himself for the sake of the church so the Bible make the women equal to the church so you are superior as a servant not as a master do you see how superior you are so here you think you are the king, but the fact you are the king who have a problems now. You are a king to serve. You are not a king to rule. Which means, okay, we give you authority, but the authority is to be servant with love. So the wife, she is your church and you have to love her and she love you. She is obedience to you, but by love, not by orders. Do you understand me? 
Like if you come right now to my house and you say, hey, CP, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm thirsty. I will be happy to go to the kitchen and bring you water. My love to serve you made me go. Otherwise, I would say you go. Right? You go. What will make your mother, you know, be happy to cook for you? Go. You're a man. Go and buy you some meal somewhere. Go to a restaurant. I'm not your servant. But she will be happy to cook for you. Correct? So there is, there is obedience with love and there is obedience with slavery. In Christianity, the woman, she is obedient to her husband because she loves him, not because she is being ordered. And the man, he is the, he is the master of the house, but he is master to serve with love, which means because he loves his wife, he will serve. Always the real, the real leaders are the servants, not the opposite. This is why when the Messiah wanted to wash the feet of his disciple, they said to him, what are you doing, Lord? You know, he said, if you don't let me do it, you don't belong to me. I don't know you. All right. Transgender. My friend, I don't want to talk about this topic. This is a silly topic. And, you know, whatever people say, male is a male and female is a female at the end of the day. You can call your, 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 yourself whatever you want. You can call yourself a fish. <laughs> if you think you're a fish, you're a fish. Good for you. <laughs> you are what you think. A woman and never more empowered than when she is led and protected by a man of God. Okay, that's good. You see that in the world today, there's a lot of confusion about, uh, you know, gender, etc. I mean, people are funny. I mean, are we are, are we really confused about what is our gender? Our gender is our gender. The man is a man. Doesn't matter what you say. The woman is a woman. You see, actually, a woman trying to make herself look like a man. It doesn't matter what you do. You are still a woman. Give me a break. Right? <clears throat> Do you know Pastor Jesus Lee? No, I no Jesus, Jesus Lee. No, I never heard of him. No, I I don't really have a vacation. You see, maybe people think I have a vacation. It's not really a vacation. I'm here for work, but because I'm close to the beach, so I'm enjoying it. You know, like when I have a time to go, I'm like today, I, this is the first day I go to the beach. I'm here already for three, four days, how many days? This is today. It was the first day I was able to go. All right. Uh, next time I go, I will, I will take longer video. And now I have internet actually. I can post longer video from, from the sea. <clears throat> My friend, I cannot judge, uh, uh, people uh, what did I don't know them how I can judge I mean that would be foolish of me but uh, but remember uh, the, the Messiah he said many things about uh, people who even do miracles uh, doing miracles in the name of Jesus does not mean that you are a good person because there is verses in the Bible that speak about people who they are casting demon in the name of the Messiah and the disciple they said, "Well, they are not with us, but they are casting demon in your name." If you remember, so they are casting demon in your name, and they can't do that because it's in his name. But it doesn't mean they are good people. However, it might be he is a good person. I don't know him. I cannot judge. I have no idea who this person is. But uh, the Bible says too that the Messiah said. Not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will, right? And then it says that there is, they will say to him, Lord, but did we, we did miracles in your name. We did miracles in your name. He said to them, depart away from me. I do not know you. So my friend, believe in the miracles, but don't believe in the people. 
Do you understand me? So miracles can happen in the name of Jesus. But people are people. Are we clear? Which means people, they can be fraud, people, they can be liars, people are people. Believe in the God, the Lord, His miraculous ability and power, but don't believe in a person. At the end of the day, if a miracle happened, it is the Messiah miracle. Not that man, not me, not you. So anytime you see such a thing, don't believe in the person, believe in God. All right. Faith in Christ will not go wrong. Thank you, servant girl. That's a good one. I see some Muslims saying that, uh, uh, refuting, my friend, Muslims, all of them, they try to refute me, but don't nobody dare to call me and refute me. You can refute me by making a video, talking to yourself, answering yourself, and and the uh, Muslims say, ha, 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 yeah, yeah, brother, thank Allah for you, brother, but they don't dare to call me. So those are a bunch of kids. All right? <clears throat> what do you think about Turkish invasion in Cyprus? Well, you know, Turkish invasion in Cyprus is not the fault of Turkey, it's the fault of European, because European, they gave Turkey, until now, this guy, he do whatever he want, and they are watching. Actually, I'm surprised why he did not all, take all of Cyprus. You see, look what happened to Europe. Europe became like a shark has no fish. Europe, it used to be a shark, and the shark lost its, 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 its the teeth. So anyone can bite you. And Cyprus and Greece, they made a very stupid mistake by joining the NATO. The NATO is like a, you know, hide and seek game like a bunch of guys playing together and one of you hide and we don't see you. This is exactly what happened to each one of them. So Turkey is joining the NATO and now they are playing hide and seek. So whatever Turkey do, the NATO don't see it. Turkey takes Cyprus, they don't see it. Turkey attacks Syria, they don't see it. If Turkey attack Greece, trust me, they will not even support the Greece. Are they real? Those are the real government. Those are the real people. This is the real army. The rest are a bunch of potatoes. <clears throat> you know, actually, uh, uh, UK don't, does not even have an army, UK. I mean, the army of UK is a, is, a, is a joke. The army of France is a joke. This is why they have USA base, because they, 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 their, their security is dependent in USA. It's an insult, actually, to have a base of a foreign army in your land. You know what I mean? Japan need USA to protect you, Japan. I mean, otherwise, they will not let USA. Nobody will allow any foreign country to be having his army in his land unless they are weak. So Europe is in the stage now where it is weak. They are, they are liberals, you know, they don't want army, they are anti-war. Okay, be anti-war, but shouldn't you have army to protect yourself? They have no border, no police. They have... You know, it's like, it's like a nation who is infected with diarrhea. And sooner or later, France have military, you're right. The French military is a joke. You know, my friend, remember those, 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 those countries, they used to be empire. What they have right now cannot even consider as a military. What military? <laughs> go and count, go just go, go and do search. How many, what is, the, what is the number of the soldiers of the French army, UK army, and compare them to any other army? You will see they didn't have an army. Switzerland have an army better than France. <laughs> army. Yeah. So this is why, you know, the, the Turkish uh, Erdogan, he knew that there's nobody to stop him except the Russian. And the Russian, he, you know, he, he made a deal with them. He buy a weapon from them just to silence them. You know, he's buying the Russian. This guy, he's saying this is the only people they can spank me hard if not destroying me, it is the Russian. Don't play with the Russian. 
So he start buying with from them weapon which he don't even need. It just to make the Russian leave him alone. Right? <clears throat> I hope European they will they will wake up and they will see what they are doing to themselves. And I hope Greece will go again and join join forces with you with with with, with, with Russia. Uh, you know, because this is the only one who will not betray you. Look what they did in Syria. The president of Syria, he was a friend to the Russian. They sent their army, they sent their troops, they sent their helicopter, and they are supporting the Assad for eight years. This is year number nine. Turkey took half of Cyprus. Nobody sent anything. Nobody even talked about it. Turkey took half of Armenia, nobody talk about it. They are even shy to talk about the genocide. Like just a few days ago, uh, the, the Congress, they, find, they sign, uh, like uh, they vote for uh, genocide of the Armenian. Trump, Trump, he did not want to vote for it because he had business in Turkey. I mean, we support Trump, but there's many things he do is stupid too. However, at the end of the day, I have to support him because either I support the potatoes Democrat or I support this guy. We have no choice. <clears throat> for me, if you ask me, who is the best president for the year 2019, 2018, 2017, 2016? I say Putin. <laughs> Look at this guy. This guy, he took his country collapsing. When this, when Putin took Russia, Russia was R Russian women were for sale. Sadly. You know, there's a time where you can order a woman online from Russia. Imagine. This is not a long time ago. There's thousands and thousands of websites created to sell women online. And then this guy, he came and he saved his country. And now his country is back to be the most powerful country in this earth. So if you are in Europe, you should have Putin. You need one, someone like Putin. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, my friend, if they are buying technology from France, does not mean they are weak. If a war happened between Russia and France, so what if they buy a ship from France? They have technology they don't have. They are they are being smart. Look what the Turkish they do. The the the, the French uh, I mean the Russian they buy technology they don't have, so they can study it and they can make out of it a new technology. It's not because they are weak. You see, Russia alone today can defeat the whole world alone. They can destroy the whole earth many time, not only America. So if if they are buying from somebody, USA buy from Israel weapon, don't you know that? But does it mean that USA is weaker than Israel? You have to understand, you know, <laughs> that if somebody buy from somebody something, don't you know that all the, the, the spaceship of USA, the, the engine is made in Russia? The Russian is the only one for a long, long time who was able to make engines to go to space. But doesn't mean the USA is a, is a weak country. So we need to study the, the, the power they have, the, you know, the ability, what they can do. So there's two superpower exist. Number one is USA. Number two is Russia. USA is more powerful as economy. But Russia is more powerful as weapon. So if a war happened, God forbid, between USA and Russia, the whole world would be destroyed, not only two countries. <clears throat> you know, 20 years ago, the Russian, they have a system, this is 20 years ago, that if, let us say, somebody nuked them by very powerful hydrogen bombs. So when radiation reach certain amount, in the space of Russia, which means everybody is dead. 
the missiles were launched by, by themselves and the whole earth will be burned. So even if you kill them, they will kill you. It's like the story of uh, some shown in, uh, in, in, uh, uh, in, in the Bible, in the Old Testament. <clears throat> oh, China is far from being powerful. China, you know, the, uh, the Russian is way more powerful than any. China is behind in everything. They are powerful in like they have numbers, uh, say, but they are far from being in the rank of Russia or even close. <clears throat> anyway, we hope that this war will never happen. You know, uh, Hitler, he did destroy half of the earth before, but war now between those giants will destroy the whole earth, which means even if you live in the end of the world and you have nothing to do with the war, still you will die. You see, who, who remember when uh, when the uh, tsunami hit uh, Japan? Anyone remember? <clears throat> when tsunami hit Japan, radiation went all the way by rain to USA, to California. Right? Well, Daniel, uh, my friend uh, Roman, I don't, I don't know. I, I cannot say this is about this, about that. Uh, but this is the Bible verses can go to any uh, story, fit with the fit with the verse. <clears throat> I cannot really say this is about the, the European Union, but I can say European Union is something good. And in the same time, it's something bad. The good about it, it's a union. The bad about it, it's liberal. You know what I mean? Liberalism is the major control of, of, uh, of the European Union. And I see now that conservative is coming back. You see, conservative in Europe, they are growing by number. They notice that those liberals, they are driving us, driving us over the cliff. The same as they were doing here in the USA. You see, things will, will change. I see a big change happening. You know, uh, Democrats here, they thought they controlled the country. Uh, like now, uh, just uh, uh, the day I left, I made a video, uh, and I post a video of uh, uh, Trump. Uh, Trump, he was saying Merry Christmas uh, message. And somebody posted in the chat, in the <coughs> in the comment, if I know you supported Trump, <coughs> sorry, let me drink something. I will not even uh, like watch your videos. Trump, <coughs> this man, he changed America, and if he if he win another four years, liberalism in USA is in a big trouble. Because if he stay for four years more, then we will have they will have only two democratic Supreme Court judge. The rest are conservative. That's it. This guy is replacing all the judges. He can replace because there's a like there's numbers of people retired, etc. All the judges they are coming to be conservative. So Trump, for me, I vote for him, not because only of this, like he is better than the previous president, but he is an exchange of direction of USA. And this is exactly what happened in, in, in UK. Liberalism, liberalism, they thought everybody, that, that, and then this guy Johnson, who is a friend of Trump, he won. So if you go around in Europe, you will see that the left is suffering because people did notice that the left did brought nothing but stupidity. You cannot agree with the person. I cannot agree with, the, with Trump in everything. Like as an example, I mentioned about uh, uh, Erdogan. He was very soft with him. But generally speaking, this person he made a lot of difference. He hired Christians judges. Uh, uh, he uh, uh, you know he he defended Christians. Uh, uh, to say their 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 faith in in university where they are banned even to make speeches imagine this is a, this is america you know liberals are already doing ugly stuff to the christians so he did a lot of accomplishment for the christians 
And for me, I have to support him. I, I, I cannot agree with him and everything, but who said we can agree with anyone with, with, with everything? Right? It's impossible. And you know, always we base our decision in what we know about his decision, but we do not know what he know. Like now, I say he is being soft with Turkey, but I do not know what is really behind the softness. Maybe there is something I agree with him about it. Maybe if I know what is the reason for his softness, I will say, oh, good, yeah, you are right. You should do it this way. You know what I mean? So we make judgment based on what we know. But what we know not necessarily is what's happening. All right. Well, I, you know, I, this, the, the filthy uh, Billy Clinton, he is the one who ordered bombing the, the, the Serbian. And I believe, you know, they, there's a lot of mistakes happening in that war. Like there, there's war crimes done by the Serbian and there's war crimes done by, uh, by the Muslims from Kosovo. But the, 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 the bigger crime is done by Billy Clinton, you know. Uh, you know, let us say that war happened in the wrong timing, where Russia was weak and the Serbian, they separated themselves from the Russian. And this is why now Serbia, they are trying to get a close again to the Russian. You see, this is what I say. You know, when you, uh, you take yourself out of your skin, you see, Greece, Serbia, Cyprus, uh, those countries, all of them, did I say they are the orthodox belt they are from you know they have one roots they are almost they are one nation ukraine i mean the 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 nato was trying to eat you bite by bite to weaken russia that the target was russia not you they took romania and look go on i know i was in romania last last summer romania is empty now there's nobody in romania all the young, they are in Europe. It's a ghost country. You see, they are nothing but people in the age of 70. So they were dying to join European Union. Okay, now we join European Union. Look, look, what, look what happened. Price of food is 10 times more expensive. The price of apartment is 10 times more expensive. And in the top of that, we don't make anything no more. The Roman meaning they used to make uh, cars. Now, even the car industry is bought by European uh, manufacturers. So the country is going wrong direction. They are trying to make them liberal the same as the rest of Europe. And they stay away from their skin. And that will bring a lot of disaster. And in the future, Romania will be empty. All right? <clears throat> So European Union was not a good thing for Romania, and I don't think it was a good thing for Poland. I don't think it was good things for uh, Moldova. It, they are they are empty. All the young ones are in Europe. You see, if you want to kill a nation, take the young ones from it. As simple as that. There's no young people there. That they are gone. Everybody is in Europe. In the west of Europe. <clears throat> anyway, you don't need to agree with me in what I say, you know. I might be wrong. I mean, this is my opinion. It might be right. It might be wrong. But I, I believe this is what's happening. But I say, like about Turkey, I believe that Turkey is going to face a big collapse. Actually, you know, I see dreams sometime and my dreams come true. And there's a dream I'm afraid to share. It was a horrible dream about Turkey. I never saw a dream. I mean, there is... Sometimes I'm afraid of seeing a dream because they will happen mostly. You know? So, I saw a dream, very horrible dream, about the future of Turkey. I can't tell you details. Because people, they will say, oh, this guy is prophesying. <laughs> I'm not. It's just a dream. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, sometimes I, I, I like, uh, uh, 
I see dreams and it, when those dreams happen, I get shocked of what I saw and what happened. Uh, and I saw a very bad dream for Turkey. I believe Turkey have a very bad, bad future. Maybe time will come and I will be able to tell you, but uh, it's, it was a very horrible thing. <clears throat> Juban, hey, no, my friend, I'm not even equal to the shoe of the Messiah and you are out of my chat. Okay. <clears throat> Well, Turkey will collapse. This is not. This is just a matter of time because this country have no, uh, you know, the economy is based on USA help and European donation. You believe in a store? Is believe is a store for Turkey? Store? I don't know what do you mean. No, dreams are not about being prophecy, prophecy, dream, you know, sometime, maybe, you know, I mean, I think it's just a dream. But maybe because, you know, I'm a person who think, I'm a person, I, like, uh, I, I have, you know, when I, when I go to sleep, I don't sleep right away. Actually, I don't know how I sleep. Because I always, I'm, my brain is thinking, 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 thinking. Sometimes I don't know, I'm asleep or I am awake. Because I wish I can turn off my brain. It's a wish. Some people, they put their head in the pillow, in two seconds, he is snoring. Never happened to me. <clears throat> what I think that will happen to Turkey, I think Turkey is going to face a very bad ending. Very bad ending. Actually, just think about it logically. The enemy of Turkey right now is the following. They are, they are bad with USA. They are bad with European Union. Bad with the NATO. Bad with Cyprus. Bad with Greece. Bad with Egypt. Bad, bad with the Saudi Arabia. Bad with Qatar. Uh, sorry, with Emirates, not Qatar. Uh, uh, bad, bad with Bahrain. Uh, bad with Syria. I mean, all the neighbors, even with Iran. All the neighbors is enemies. And this is the worst thing you do as a president, to make everybody around you enemies. That is the most stupid thing you do. Not even a single one of the neighbors is a friend. You know what I mean? <clears throat> I have a DHD. What is that? Is that high definition TV? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, ADHD stands for attention defect, reactive, oof, 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 disorder, medical condition, a person which has different brain development, brain activities that affect attention. All of this happening to me? Oh, okay. <laughs> No, my friend, I don't have a defect. Thank God, my brain is perfect. I mean, I'm very happy that God, he gave me a brain, <coughs> which is functioning very well. <coughs> no. No, like, you know, when I, uh, uh, when, when I go to sleep, if... I, in order to sleep, I have to be very tired, physically. Uh, thinking does not make me tired that easy. The only thing can make me sleep good is, uh, you know, be tired physically. Like making a long swim, you know, physical work, hard work. Um, that's all. <clears throat> It's not a defect. I don't know. It might be a defect too. <laughs> it's my throat. <laughs> it's fine. <clears throat> yeah, that's okay. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, let us see what we have here. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> well, I don't see anything like interesting more to talk about. I, you know, I hope that, that my message. I want to say thank you for all those who made the uh, donation, and the one who asked uh, about my trip. My trip. Is a very busy trip. It's not a vacation, really. I, I wish it is. But uh, I'm trying to have a good time at the same time because I'm not far away from the beach. If I'm able to go maybe in two days from now to the beach, I will take video. Uh, this time, I will be sure to, to get some bait uh, because today I went, I don't have a bait. And the stores are closed. You know, it's a New Year eve uh, morning. Uh, so I will try to get some bait and do some fishing. And record video for you all right <clears throat> you're not what the Talmud say about our lady and Lord Orthodox defense I don't know what do you mean my friend but why you care for the Talmud the Talmud first is not a holy book secondly it is a book written by rabbis from the Jews so who why you mention the Talmud there's many people, they, they curse Jesus every day. Every day. Even those who claim to be Christians. Every day you see a movie saying the F word to Jesus. Right now in Netflix, they, have a, they, are, they are making fun of Jesus. So why only the Talmud is your problem? My friend, the Messiah is the good tree and everybody will throw his rock at it. So, Stop thinking about the Jews and Talmud. We laugh at it. So what? Is that something new? How come you don't get angry from those who say the F word in a movie? You enjoy and you watch and you continue watching. Hmm? You don't complain. I see here a hypocrisy. All those famous actors, you like them in their movies, they say the F word to Christ every time they go in movie. 90% of movies, they have that curse. And you watch, and you like them, and you support them, and you buy their movies. Which means you are making them rich. At least the Talmud is a book nobody read. You know what I mean? Uh -uh. Michigan man, you spit in the Torah. Hey, my friend, uh, do spit as much as you want. However, spitting is something not healthy for you because soon you will be out of water. And I think you're an elephant by birth. The solution for Europe is the same solution for everybody. Education, that's what we do. You see, people, they are destroyed because of their ignorance. That's what the Bible says. So fight ignorance, my friend. The problem everywhere is ignorance. It's not Islam. Islam is not the problem. Let me explain it to you. People die today by cancer, correct? Cancer. Cancer is killing millions of people every year. But trust me, cancer is not the problem. It is our ignorance because one day flu was doing the same flu people die from flu stupid flu what the problem is our ignorance it's just stupid small virus you can fight it easy but because we were ignorant we do not know how to fight a flu and millions of European were dying from the flu and millions of Middle Eastern and Asian etc around the world dying from flu was the biggest problem human being have flu so what the problem it was the ignorance not the flu the flu right now is exists but we're not dying from it you know what i mean
So fight the ignorance, and then you will not have a problem with the flu. Islam is like a flu. The problem is you don't have an immune system because you don't have education. They, you know, the, the liberals in Europe, they forbid Christianity to be taught in schools. So it became a tradition and nobody knows anything about Islam and nobody knows anything about Christianity. So now the Muslims, they take advantage of that. And that's why we are here. All right. <clears throat> Do you understand? This is why we are here. Otherwise, why would we be here? We are here to share knowledge so you can fight the, 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 this cult. Uh, uh, Mr. Orthodox Defense. Yeah, but uh, you know, I understand. Maybe you are not, maybe you are. But this is not the issue. The issue is why you focus in a book which is nobody read. How many people read the Talmud? Okay, let us ask a question here. How many of you did read the Talmud? Give me one. If any of you did read the Talmud, give me one, please. How many of you did read the Talmud? <clears throat> How many? I don't think any of you did read it. <laughs> so why why you care for it? It's already gone. So look what you are doing now. You think you are fighting it, but you are making people maybe think about it now. Why well, you promote something stupid? Nobody read it. Even the Jews don't read it. <laughs> Tell me what. Talmud is a is a book of fiction. Actually, Muhammad he got tons of his story from there. Flying carpets and stupid stories, all the garbage of Muhammad is coming from the Talmud. All the legion, the aunt of Suleiman and the Talmud and its sisters. Actually, the reason Muhammad became a joke. It because of the stories of the rabbis. Those rabbis, <laughs> they are very high. Oh boy. <laughs> All right. Yeah, the Torah is what we care for. The rest is, is you know, it's just a, a book of fictions, a collection of stories, you know. <clears throat> you know, in the Middle East, we have books about the brave men, stories. Those are stories they used to sit like, you know, every night in the Middle East, and there's a guy, he can read. And he reads from them, and the crowd, they listen, and they shout, like, Allahu Akbar, etc. Between, so this is about two guys from two tribes, and there, there is a war, and there is poetry between them. Poetry. So the first one, he said the other one, poetry, and the other one, he said poetry to him. And then they fight, and he hit him, and etc. And the crowd get, ex so at that time, this was the entertainment center, the movie. So every day at night, the men come to the coffee, let us say it's a coffee shop, all right? And there's a guy who will sit in the top of a chair. Let me see if I can find you uh, what I'm talking about. Let us take a, take a break from Trump. <laughs> Give me a second. All right, here we go. Uh, 
I'm trying to find you some pictures. This is a long history. But at that time, it's like that's like watching, uh, you know, uh, you know, TV these days. All right. So a guy he will sit in the chair and he have a book, and he read usually from like. Uh, 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 the story of Abu Zayd al muhalhal Salama, or the story of Antara. I mean, there's those, those are, and those, by the way, are Christians too. Those are heroes in the Arabian history, and they, they have a lot of poetry about them. So the crowd sit in this place every night, and this guy, he sit in the chair, and he read for them the story with a lot of, like, uh, let us say, sound effect like and he hit him in the head and etc and people they go like yes yes and those who support this guy if he lose in this page they go angry against the other guys because like the whole it's like it's like a stadium between two uh, the football team this is the football team at that time so the rabbis you know they have tons of stories fiction stories it was kind of entertainment for them in their time and many of them they do they make they fabricate those stories to control the crowd as an example if you remember let us go do you remember when a Jewish woman she said <coughs> uh, I didn't see the picture hold on let me put the picture for you you see this guy here this guy he have a book in his hand he read the story and the crowd go excited. So he like he he they, they put a, ch a chair in the top of a high stage, higher than the crowd, and people they are smoking argila, you know, or they call it nargila, and he's he you know he caught the story and he, they go crazy. <clears throat> no, there is a book of Enoch which is fake, and there is Enoch the real person who is mentioned. This is a true true. But there's a fake book, it's called the Book of Enoch. We don't accept it, it's a stupid book. And obviously it's, it's fake, you can tell in two seconds. Anyway, if you remember when, when a Jewish woman, she came to the house of Muhammad and she said that most of the punishment of the grave, the grave is from the urine. <clears throat> Let us see that. Do you remember the story? This is what Muhammad got from the rabbi. He learned those stories from them. This is why he turned to be stupid. So the woman, she said to Aisha, uh, this Jewish woman, that the most of the uh, punishment in the grave, it is because of the urine. All right? The woman, the Jewish woman, she came and she spoke to Aisha. And Aisha, she accused her to be a liar. This is going to be true. Muhammad, he heard the story and he adopted the story from the Jews. And those stories are the stories of the rabbi. Let us see. There we go. This is the hate, actually. Uh, Aisha said a Jewish woman, she came to her and mentioned the story of the punishment of the grave, saying to her, may Allah, you know, protect you from the punishment of the grave. Okay. Okay, but what is the reason for punishment of the grave? Here we go. It is urine. So Muhammad, he learned that from the rabbi, and he adopted their stupid stories. So let us say the rabbis, the stupidity of the rabbis, they made Islam look really stupid. Muhammad, he believed really in those rabbis, that those people, whatever they say, it must be true. So he adopted blindly 
whatever they say. You know what I mean? And because of that, Muhammad became a joke for us today. I mean, who in the world want to believe that there's a God who punish you? The most punishment in the grave is because of urine. I mean, if this is the reason for a punishment, why, why, why Allah He made us have urine? <laughs> How you can be punished because of urine? I mean, what a crime! <laughs> right? <laughs> You know what I mean? So, uh, the rabbis, I'm very thankful for them. They made Muhammad really uh, get busted. Even though some of them, they don't mean it, you know. But because this guy, he accepts whatever the rabbi they say, he, he, whatever the Jews, Muhammad, he say, he take it for granted. That is true. You see the story of Al-Khadr? You remember Al-Khadr? Mr. Green, the guy who drank from the fountain of youth? The one who made Muhammad in trouble because of it, you know, the, the, the rabbis. They came to him and they asked him, what do you think about the prophet Al-Khadr? So now this guy, he believes he's a prophet. And he believed that his name is Al-Khadr. That's it. This is what you know. Who is Al-Khadr? What his first name? What his last name? Where is he from? Who is, who is Al-Khadr? Mr. Green. And why is Mr. Green? Because he drank from a fountain. It's called the Fountain of Youth. So... The, the, but in this case, the Jews, they wanted to make fun of Muhammad. So they asked him about the Rabbi, the, the, the Al-Khadr. Muhammad, he started asking, searching. He heard the stories about Al-Khadr. And this is very well known. I mean, people, they speak about Al-Khadr always. Uh, since the time of Gilgamesh and even before about a fountain of youth, a person who drank from it, seeking uh, eternal life. And this is why the Muslim believe that Al-Khadr, which means Mr. Green, which means supposedly his name is Mr. Green because if he sit in the grass and he sweat the grass will turn a green because he is sweating from the water of life all right because he drink from the water of life so Al-Khadr was alive in the time of Noah he was alive in the time of Musa he was alive in the time and even if he, even he joined he joined the funeral of Noah he was in the funeral of uh, of Musa he, uh, he was in the funeral of uh, 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 Muhammad, all right, and many Muslims believe that he is still alive. All those was from the trap of the rabbis of the Jews. We made many videos before about them. You can watch them if you want. Uh, all right, <clears throat> you can watch them. Yeah, if you remember the story where it says. Uh, the fountain of, of life, Ma'ul Hayat. <clears throat> Let us see here. Uh, here we go. You see, when he arrived, he found the water. It's called the water of life. You see the story? So they will take them. And by then they would have, uh, sorry, I can hold on. Okay. Uh, what is, uh, and they will uh, spring out, a seed spring out of the bank of the rainwater stream. And they will remain, uh, okay. Water, here, water called Ma'ul Hayat, water of life. Do you see it? So what happened supposedly that this guy, Mr. Green, he drank from the water of life, the fountain of youth. And because of that, he never died. He's alive. All right? <clears throat> Five prayers? Well, first in Islam, there's no five prayers. There are three. The five prayers, I believe, is something invented later. You know, uh, when Muhammad, you see, Muhammad is a Sabian person. And he was copying from the Sabian a lot of things, including the prayer. 
and Ramadan, he took it from the Sabi and two. And the Wudu, he took it from the Sabi and two. However, the Quran never mentioned anywhere that there's five prayers. The Quran mentioned that there's three prayers. If you go in the Quran, Chapter 11, verse 114, it says the following. And perform the Salat at the two end of the days and before the night come. Not some hours, this is, uh, you know, let us change translation. So it's three time only. This is what the Quran mentioned, they were mentioned five prayers. And if the Muslim, they will say, uh, no, it's a conclusion, it's mentioned in different places, that will make the Quran with a contradiction. Because either Allah, he says three prayers or five prayers. See here in the translation, they say five, but it doesn't say that. It says the two end of the day and the approach of the night. Fast translation. This is a translation of Bikta. Let us see. Um... Uh, Perform the prayer at the borders of the days, not borders, at the two end of the day, and during the approach of the night, that's it. Three prayers. Nowhere it says uh, five prayers. Mumkin in Ziyam in a room. Ziyam in a room, your Rijal. Shviha. Ziyam, Ziyam. Uh, Hibachi spicy chicken. God bless you. Thank you. You must be in love with the chicken, huh? <laughs> thank you, my friend. Happy New Year. <clears throat> thank you for all those who uh, who support us. I really appreciate you. Anything else, guys, you'd like me to speak about? I, I was really happy that I'm able to get internet uh, because. Uh, you know, if I don't, that's mean I will stay without speaking to you, making very short videos, you know, and post it. But God is good. We have very good speed internet, and uh, I will be able to do as long as I'm here. <clears throat> the only miracle of the Quran, Shaitan made it. No, my friend, Shaitan is a smarter. There's no way Shaitan made the Quran, and I will give you reasons. Shaitan, Satan, is a very powerful creature, correct? Remember, for us as a Christian, we believe Satan was an angel, right? Now, the Bible says the father of all lies is who? Is Satan, correct? Okay, so he is the father of lies. But doesn't mean that the Quran is made by Satan, and I will prove it to you. The Quran is satanic as an idea, as belief, but it's not made by Satan. Why? Because it's the most stupid, silly book ever. There's no way Satan is... I mean, I mean, I would be so disappointed if Satan is the one who made this book. Because Satan will look like a little rabbit <clears throat> who is chewing a carrot and he think he is, it's a microphone. You know what I mean? So I don't think really it's Satan who made the Quran. <clears throat> because this is a very silly, stupid book. I mean, there's no way Shaitan, he would think that a sun set in murky water... <laughs> he knew better <laughs> there's no way Satan he think that there is two east and two west <laughs> two east and two west and then the Muslim they try to explain to you yeah the 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 the, 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 the sunset in the winter different from the sunset in the summer different but my friend this is not two east and no two west The only Lord who is the Lord of the two east and the two west is Allah. So, you know, <clears throat> Shaitan is not that much fool. I mean, he's a fool, but not that much donkey. This is a donkey talk, talk you know. The Lord of the two east and the Lord of the two west. So, what Muhammad foolishness is, he thought because the sun in the winter set in different place from where the sun set in the summer. 
So he said, okay, this is different sun and this is two east. All right. <clears throat> My friend, Muslims, they refute themselves. Isn't it this is the guy whom he, he, uh, hijab, he, uh, he posted a video for him, inhalation, inhalation for the apostate prophet? This is the most stupid guy. He is the one who said the sun, hey, my friend, the sun doesn't sit in the murky water. It says under the throne of Allah. And then they show the hadith. It says, so I got him, but those, those are kids. Don't mention their names. If they have the courage, let them call me. I do not need to get them busted. They, their videos themselves, they get themselves busted. They are not even worth my me talking about them. They have no courage to call me. Muhammad ever improve anything from his time? Uh, Muhammad in, uh, improve anything? Well, you see, uh, <clears throat> like let's say, sometime the lie can have a truth. As an example, Muhammad he wanted to be accepted as a prophet, so he starts saying that he believe in Isa, which is supposed to Jesus, and he believe in the miracle of Isa, which is positive, but he is believing in order to promote his lies. He said that Mary she was a virgin, which is something good to say for us as a Christian. So Muhammad he brought with many lies, but in the lies there is some truth. And the reason with the truth is to promote himself, not because he's truthful. You know what I mean? It's like the Ahmadiyya, the cult of the Ahmadiyya. Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, in order to be accepted, what he said, he's I'm the Messiah. Which means he accepted that the Messiah exists. Correct? But now he is the Messiah. So there is liars and there is scammers who use the truth to, to scam you. Do you understand me? It's like somebody want to put poison to kill you. Where he will put it? In, a, in your toilet seat or in your dish or your favorite dish? He will put it in your favorite dish. The one he is sure you will love to eat it. So Muhammad, let us say, the positive of Muhammad is evil, even the positive. Even when he say he accepted Mary, that she gave birth to Jesus as a virgin, it was for evil purpose. <clears throat> is it true that Muhammad himself fed a blind Jewish man until the day? Well, they, uh, let us see the reference. The, when the Muslim they say that, let us let us see the reference, and so we can laugh. There is millions of stories Muslim they fabricate. And they already exist. We cannot find them. As an example, there is a Jew who used to piss in the door of the Prophet every day, and he throw his garbage. Okay, I change the Muslim to show me the story. I want to see it. Or the Muslim they say when the Prophet he ran away, uh, he hide in the hide in the cave, and the spider web covered the cave. Okay, show me the reference where we come. We cannot find. It. I mean, these these tons of stories they fabricate and they repeat, but nobody can see it. Or the prophet says, seek education, even if it's in China. Okay, I challenge the Muslim to show me the hadith where we can find it. Where we can find those hadith? All those stories are not exist. They are rejected. They are fabricated. But if it is for the purpose of promoting Muhammad, they repeat it, even they knew it's a lie. And this is the unique thing about Islam, because they knew it's a lie. And there, as an example, the story where Muhammad, he says, there is no difference between a black and white. Correct? There's a, there's a there's called the Sermon of the of the uh, Hajjat Wada. All right. How many times we quote for them, they say to us, this is weak. We don't accept it. Well, the Senate is Daif. The Senate suddenly this story is accepted. Okay, I have a challenge for all the Mohammedans who will watch this video. Who want to show me a hadith from Sahih al Bukhari from an authentic source that the story is exist? It's not. This is a fabricated story. But suddenly, all the rules which the Muslim they try to put for hadith. Saying where is the Senate? The Senate, which means like the the uh, like who is you know, those who reported who they are, the the, the one who mentioned it, the, the the chain of narration, blah blah, blah blah blah. All of those suddenly they are not important because this hadith support their propaganda. So if the hadith support the propaganda, we accept it. 
Muhammadan they are like the Lord of the two east and the Lord of the two west. So if it's summertime, their west is different. <laughs> they are seasonable people, you know, depending on the season. Islam change depend in the season. In the time where people became more secular, Islam trying to adopt secularism. Islam is like a snake, change its skin. You know what I mean? Islam in the Middle East says, we want to kill you Christians, we want to slaughter you. Islam in Europe, in Islam is peace. Islam in America, Islam is an angel. But in the Middle East, they say to us clearly, they want to kill you. You go in the Middle East, you hear the sheikh in the speaker, right in the speaker, you hear it in your home. The Christians are the filthy, the pigs, the dirty. You go in Europe, you know, you speak to a Muslim in the street, you say, we don't say that to Christians, no. No, we don't say that. We respect Christians. Islam teaches us to respect others. <clears throat> no, I cannot take calls for today. I apologize. But uh, maybe maybe uh, soon we will take your uh, calls. Yeah, in Europe, you know, professors, they are lying to you, fooling you about Islam is a wonderful religion. I mean, when a professor, he says that, how he can be a professor? What is the, I mean, isn't it Islam who invade Europe? Isn't it Islam not long a time ago took half of Europe? Isn't it Islam today actually taking already half of Europe? Isn't it Turkey half of Europe? What is Turkey? Turkey, this is Europe. This is not the land of the of, 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 of something called Turkish. I mean, you do not need, you know, when somebody says he's a professor, go back and read the book of history. We don't want to fight Islam. We don't want to fight. We you know fight the cult of Islam. We don't want to fight Muslims. We want you know we want peace on earth, and the only way to fight Islam, the best way, the smart way, is to expose the stupidity of this cult. This cult is very easy to fight, to defeat. All what you need is education. As simple as that. And wherever you get opportunity, don't keep your mouth shut. If somebody says Islam good, discuss with him nicely, friendly, and see why you are saying that. How is this is going to be true? So don't be there like watching people saying lies or people being deceived. You have a duty to do, my friend, right? We have a duty. <clears throat> Happy New Year, Sam. Happy New Year. How are you, my friend? Will you educating David and Muslims help us to make them leave Islam? My, David, what I'm doing here, my friend, so what I'm doing here, isn't it I'm educating you so you can fight Islam, right? And you can help Muslims. We, we are, I'm, I'm not against Muslims, I'm against Islam. So we want to help the Muslims, and the only way to help is yourself first, and your society, and with the Muslims included, if they are there, is to 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 spread the correct education about Islam. My friend, if you are wounded by Islam, we will fight Islam. CP, what does that mean? And if I wounded or not, don't don't fight anyone because of me. Don't worry. What, what fight? Don't worry. If I wounded, I wounded. Who cares? You know. And if I die, I die myself. Don't worry about me. Don't fight anyone because of me. <clears throat> fight lies, my friend. Spread the truth and don't worry about me. We need a Christian jihad. What is jihad? What does jihad mean? What we need to go and kill? No, we do not need that. <clears throat> the best, the best, my friend, the best, the victory is to own the heart and the mind, is not to slaughter. Slaughtering people is a is is a is a is, a, is a, actually is kind of you proving that you are an idiot. So we do not need to do something called a Christian jihad. You can defend yourself if you have to. If somebody will attack you, this is not this is not the question about it. Self defense is always a must. You know, this is different. But we are talking about jihad. Jihad is attacking others who did nothing to you. This is what jihad means. 
Muhammad he says I've been ordered to fight and kill all mankind unless they convert to Islam this is what jihad means so don't use that term because that will make you as a Christian look ugly disgusting <clears throat> Yeah, I read your I read your comment because your comment is not right. Yeah, jihad means struggle, but what kind of struggle? Struggle by fighting by sword. You know, Muhammad he says the best of the jihad is to kill. Yeah, there is many way of jihad exactly. You know. <clears throat> Let me find the hadith. Yeah, I mean, they, they try to make jihad is about, you know. Actually, why when I go and see the hadith? Let's see the Quran. Here we go. <clears throat> the word jihad uh, is to kill the kuffar. Chapter 5, verse number four, uh, uh, 54. Muslim, they should be kind toward Muslims, but they should do jihad against non-Muslims. Here they say they strive in the way of Allah. Okay, but it doesn't, you know, I mean, this is the first translation. They go against the kuffar and they kill them. You can read the interpretation. The Muslim interpretation, not my interpretation. All right. <clears throat> so, Jihad is about going after somebody who don't believe in your belief, and then you kill him. This is jihad. They translate the word jihad strive in Arabic. Here we go. Ya ayyuhan nabi, jahidil kuffara wal munafiqeen. O Prophet, do jihad against the disbelievers. And how you can do that? <laughs> kill them. Right, and if you do jihad, uh, you know Allah will give you rivers and virgins and etc. You know, <clears throat> this is the jihad. Go in war, even if you, it's hot. So what? Spend your money for the sake of Allah and yourself, your life, which means you die for His sake. So they try, you know, they try to make it look different, sound different, but it's it's obvious. <clears throat> look, always translate the you know jihad mightly might uh, do mighty struggle against the kuffar. What does that mean? Go right now to Ibn Kathir and see what does that mean. <laughs> <clears throat> all right so anyway guys i think we have enough for today um i might not be able to come here tomorrow uh, but if i can i will maybe uh, I, I will i will come is this time is good guys is our time the one maybe i will do it in the same time to, uh, tomorrow if i can so i hope that's we we did have a good time together and i hope that's uh, our new year uh, will be uh, a new every day a new year in our life let us say we need to refresh our life uh, we need to think about what we should do and what we should not do uh, well, you know we should seek different let us say environment if our environment is not right change not only not always wrong change can be good sometimes so if your if your past year was wrong, why do you want to stay with the wrong? You know what I mean? 
why why we want to where we are why we are afraid of a change we should not be afraid especially if the change hopefully is for something better don't be a person who is afraid of a change just because you don't know what is this change will do to you if the past already is wrong so what is going to happen life is not only a journey it's a journey you make And always you have to look up for something better. But before you look up, you have to have your feet standing in something firm. And to be standing in something firm, we have to have faith in what we are standing on. So for me, I look for tomorrow to be a better tomorrow. But I can see a better tomorrow if I see myself standing firm in my belief a person who have no faith is a homeless you see our faith give us a shelter it's like the, the the shells you see in the ocean you know those creatures who live inside the shell very weak it's like a jelly you know if you touch it you can break it but the shell is so strong so how this little tiny creature, he can make such a thing. He can create such a solid home from his own body. He's not like bringing cement and making it together and building a house like what we do. No, no, this is simple creature. Create his house and he move with it. He live inside it. He move with it. And he is more, way more secure. And this is what faith can do for us. It move with you. It's a moving house. Protect you from all things around you, evil and bad. You live in the ocean as a small, tiny creature. And then there is a huge fish, but yet she cannot eat you because you are inside that solid hard bones so this smaller creature was able to secure itself and create an environment of protection and all of this is from inside from the inner so if that little tiny creature can do that why you cannot You know what I mean? Why you cannot? So I hope that our coming year is going to be a year of protection, a year of faith, a year of family, a year of love, and a year of better us. It's not a new year party. It's not a drink. It's not shaking your bum and think this is a, like this is the day you are waiting for. Those are stupid things you see in TV. It's not a firework, which is nothing but a shame. Spending hundreds of millions of dollars and there's people, they are sleeping under the bridge somewhere. They have money to burn. Maybe, maybe should somebody ask himself and say, how much money is burned yesterday at night? Burned literally. They burn it for what? For seeing something blinking for a second in the sky. So my friend, the best firework is the firework of God. Look at this creation. Look at this sky. Look at it and be, you know, it's amazing. Their firework is temporarily costly and illegitimate and real and actually guilty 
because they are spending money which they should spend for something better you see poor countries like you know once I I was in the Philippines and I saw how they celebrate the new year it was really really shame I mean this is a poor country but suddenly everybody have money suddenly everybody is burning his money this is a poor country at night if I say tons of millions of dollars are burned this you can't even breathe you can't even breathe you close the windows you cannot even because you are afraid of from the smell you, the, 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 the air is disgusted so they have no money but suddenly they have money for fair work government have no money to help citizens but suddenly government they have money for firework so this is not really uh, this is not really the new year of the Lord remember the new year is the new year of Christ is not the new year of those idiots who are drinking and dancing in the street this is the day of the Messiah and this is a day where you review what you did in the past and you think about tomorrow and you know it's a it's a day of correction it's a day of calendar yes but it's just a day to continue for something better so i hope the coming year and already we started this year will be something of us new we will have more energy more production and more love to our family our friends if you are a person who is thinking about divorce i advise you to rethink because divorce is very ugly if you are a woman or a man you are not happy with your marriage i advise you to think it twice before you think about divorce divorce is extremely ugly if you are a person who have a children's you better think about them and think about how you can make your family happy if you are a person who have a temper well, you can fight it and see how you can do that and do your best and do, don't be don't say I have a temper what I can do. That's an excuse. You know, we have many things we need to fix. So we need to make this a new year, a year of fixing. So the year after it, we will have a good engine to run faster and better. Not a year of parties and drinking beer. This is not what will help you. right so work hard live better as simple as that I want to say thank you all of you for being here may the Lord bless you uh, I will try to be here tomorrow if I can you will see me posting if there is something to to uh, to share and until then I will say may the Lord uh, bless your family plus your health and this is the most important to pray for that we have a healthy uh, brain healthy heart and here it's literally and metaphorically and healthy uh, relationship with people around us uh, I, I pray that all of us we will be uh, people who uh, forgive uh, and don't take hate in their heart uh, I pray that if somebody of you ever I was rude with him he forgive me I don't mean it I don't know you nothing personal I am a person who speak very naturally and I don't mean really to insult anyone but I mean every word I say which mean if my word appear to be an insult to you it's an advice but it sounds an insult to you so it's a wrong understanding from you about what I'm saying to you so still I pray that people will understand me better about what I'm doing about where we are what we are trying to accomplish here and i pray that all of us we will join in this mission so we can work for best and help everybody need help all right <clears throat> thank you may the lord bless you and then i will see you tomorrow if i can or the day after christ is lord and happy in your year for all of you, your family, your friends, and for sure, 
I wish the Muslims, even though they don't like us to wish them Happy New Year, we wish them really a Happy New Year. We wish them a better life. And we wish them to open their heart. And we pray to open their heart so they can see the truth. And the truth will set you free, my friend. Nothing else will set you free except the truth. And the truth is the Messiah, the Christ. His name is a glory. His words is amazing. And he is the living God. See you soon. Bye-bye.